Hello, Internet. Um, so I thought, uh, well, first of all, I'm going to do some reviews of Hampton. Um, but before that, I thought I would talk a little bit about um, scores and ratings and how we, you know, think, can think about them. Um, and particularly, so, so I've been using, um, in, my, in my own scoring, I've been using the Robert Parker 100-point score uh, for years. Right, and everyone's got their own little little twist on on that particular scoring system, um, because you need to you need some way of you know translating what 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 does an eighty two or whatever mean? Um, you need to think to think about that. So I I you know been been trying to find some way of of putting you know qualitative words to those numbers, and uh, I finally hit upon one I I'm I'm semi satisfied with in the form of Dave Tate. Um, Dave Tate, former powerlifter, uh, current CEO of Elite FTS, who will sell you a very nice um, power rack if you if you'd like. Anyways, he's written done some interviews and, and done some articles on a scale of I believe of his own, uh, where he tries to rank everything in terms of his capacities for various sorts of things. So uh, things can be graded uh, differently depending on you know the sort of thing you're grading them on. Um, ranging from shit to suck to good to great. Um, what I love about this scale is that there's no middle member. There's no sort of average. There's no place in between suck and good. Um, so you have to decide, um, you know, if something's on the border, does it ha is it suck leaning up or is it good leaning down? Um, it also starts to make you appreciate the amount of work it takes just to get to suck. Um, it starts uh, to make you appreciate the amount of work it takes to get from suck to good, um, which, which you know, if you just throw everything in the middle, is lost. So the thought is basically this: um, taste talking in a in a kind of fitness uh, kind of situation. But the point is this: you walk into a gym, right? This is this is a bit dangerous for me to talk about because uh, the the pandemic is such that I haven't been in the gym for entirely too long. But you walk into a gym. And you look around, and most people in the world are not there. They are not even trying. Um, their fitness is shit. That doesn't make them bad people. Maybe they, you know, uh, some, maybe some of the people in, actually in the gym are still shit, um, right? It doesn't make them a bad person. Could be reasons for that. Maybe no one's taught them. Maybe, you know, they just can't, uh, you know, don't have the time, resources to prioritize that. And that's okay. Um, but you look around and you'll see uh, lots of shit. You look around a little bit more and you'll see some suck. You'll see some people who aren't very good, but they're trying. They're making the effort, right? These are the people, you know, maybe, they're, maybe their best deadlift is only, you know, 225 and it's kind of ugly. But they're deadlifting. They're, they're putting in the effort, you know? That, that is suck. Um, you know, you're not a good yet. But you've taken taken the tiny steps you need to sort of climb your way up to a certain level of respectability. Um, look around a little more. It's not so much veterans. You're not looking at the veterans because some veterans still suck. But um, there are you're going to find also a few people, less of them, far less, who've uh, been around long enough to learn how stuff works and to get good at it, um, right? Uh, and if among those few, there is an even smaller number that, uh, you know, due to some combination of providence and hard work, are great at what they do. And uh, everyone looks at them and wonders how the hell they do it. And um, they probably couldn't explain it to you themselves, um, but they're great. Um, and I think this, this maps nicely onto, you know, whiskey, rum, for example. Rum... I don't think it's that controversial for me to say that most rum, you walk into a, a, an average liquor store, most of the rum there is shit, right? There's lots of gradations within shit, right? There's, um, being shit doesn't mean undrinkable. Being shit just means, you know, uh, it's not trying, really. Um, so for example, um, this is a bottle of Crujan single barrel. I have had uh, in my liquor cabinet for probably close to a decade. I just don't have the heart to drink it, nor to throw it out. Um, this is, it's fine. 
it's not gross and disgusting like you know Bundaberg or things like that um I just don't see any reason to drink it because it's not really trying um this is shit and this is you know on the high end of shit but you know that's what we're talking about it wouldn't take that much to make this a little bit better they just have to throw in a little bit more of the um the more characterful spirit that they make the aguardiente and they'd have to bottle it at maybe higher strength and that would start to look you know more like this scarlet ibis i reviewed this i rather enjoyed this um you know it's not great um but it's trying you know they're bottling at higher strength they're using some more characterful spirit some good casks it doesn't take that much you know um just uh change a few things and you move from shit to suck that's all it takes um uh so you you move up from there and um once you start dealing with things that have you know well, like real character to them um rather than just being kind of drinkable because the scarlet ibis is is you know drinkable it just doesn't have a lot of character yet um once you start getting character in the picture then you're starting to talk about good right um here's an example this is rum jm this is a single barrel um let's see how old is this like three or four years old i haven't reviewed this yet but i will and i'm going to score it sort of in the in the good range um and then there there are some things out there like for example this hamden which i think is great this is this is so good and i don't know how they do it it's you know has something to do with the um, black stuff growing all over the distillery I'm, I'm guessing um but this is just you know in a different place this is you know we're, we're scratching the the tourist of the heavens here um i've already reviewed this i liked it a lot and uh, uh so i thought it would be a good good occasion to review some some other so that's the thought so for my scale you know i still use the robert parker scale based with pluses and minuses and question marks for fun um but you know in terms of how i break it down you know zero to 75 well no zero to 74 let's say that um that's that's all shit. different gradations of shit, but you know um none of it is stuff i would consider like you know i wouldn't throw it in a glencairn glass and you know sit down to enjoy it it doesn't mean you know i could use it in mixed drinks or stuff like that but you know it's not not for this um let's take this away 75 to say like 82 82 plus you're talking suck right um fine perfectly drinkable just not you know extraordinary um once you're in the the mid 80s sort of 83 up to 90 i would say um that's good that's good stuff once you're once you're north of 90 you're in great um and you will have noticed i don't drink a lot of great stuff and i'm very excited when i do so uh thank you for bearing with me let's actually get to the reviews now okay so hamden uh these are two different uh, bottle smaller batch bottlings of hamden distillery which i talked about before i will link um my previous reviews down down below so you can watch them if you like now these are not the higher ester um uh hamden marks you've got the lfch here which i believe is second from the bottom in terms of esters um this is a bottling by uh, uh velier um distilled 2011 bottle 2018 i'm not sure you can see all that i'll put all that put all the information below seven years old it's only got two um, a measly 231.3 grams per hectoliter um uh bottle 60.5 percent alcohol though so that's that's nice um uh and that's all about all i can like to, to say about it um anyway so this is this is hamden doing its impression of like normal ish rum this is not that far away from oh like that that plantation reviewed um uh maybe a couple weeks ago um this is a sample that was that was, that was uh given to me this is uh uh another hamden this is a, they're an official bottling uh, not Nelia this time this is their own uh, just for New York, this is the New York edition, 2010, uh, bottled in 2019, so it's a nine-year-old. Uh, this is single cast 327, and this is from the LROK uh, 
mark, Elrock, if you like, um, which is a step up from this, right? So these are both, neither of these are sort of in DOK territory, but um, these are more modest Hamptons. Um, so I thought it would be fun to, uh, to compare the two. And uh, yeah, that's all I can think about. So both Asian tropics, both, both ex-bourbon so far as I know. Um, and let's get this started. So starting uh, on the on the Valier first. Notes on the nose. Okay, it took me a while to figure this one out, but once once I, I I put my finger on what I was smelling, it was really obvious. So Senegal, West Africa, um, they have a, a pretty robust tea culture there. In particular, they love their mint tea. Um, we went to a place. Oh, what is the name of it? On uh, 47th. Uh, street here in, in, in Chicago. Um, great cuisine, I'm sorry. And uh, they gave us some mint tea one time. They, they used honey, not sugar, because I, they were you know, sort of health nuts out there. But, um, you know, really sort of traditional Senegalese mint tea. And it was it was great. And this smells, that is the most prominent note on this. On this. It's Senegalese mint tea. So think, you know, honey and stewed you know mint leaves not not fresh mint like you've, you've stewed them in hot water there's tons of this stuff there's a little bit of the cherry cola note that i associate with hamden um but not too much it's much more on kind of just banana like bright banana frankly um i usually get underripe and overripe this is this is right on ripe um banana a couple of black olives cane juice, and just like rock candy, that kind of thing. Um, a little brininess in there with the olives. Um, certain floral nature, not as floral as the um, as uh, as this guy, but uh, you know, there's definitely some some dried wildflowers going on in there. Um, it's very simple. There's a little bit of a mineral note, a little bluestone, um, some vanilla on the palate. You, you you pick up on the 60% alcohol. Wait, 60.5, sorry. Um, but peppery, more peppery than on the nose. Um, briny, very olive driven still. But then, the, you know, there's, there's still a little bit of that honeyed milk tea component playing around with it. Uh, so you're, it's really an interplay between the sort of olivey character and the um, the mint tea character. Um, cherry Coke, a little bit, a little bit still, um, a little vanilla Coke too. Hang on. Yeah. Cherry Coke, vanilla Coke. I don't know if banana Coke is a thing, but if there were, there would be banana Coke in this. Um, a little bit of like, like sh a sherry th component, like young Amontillado or something like that. tobacco like um like a black a really black stove tobacco you know take some virginia and and, and 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 cook it um pineapple upside down cake that's been a component in rum that i talked about before um a little yeah it's still very the, the mint tea and the olives are still dominating there's, there's also that floral note in there that sort of wild flower kind of dried flowers thing Nice. Okay, I'm going to give this a couple squirts of water just to bring it down to a um, more comfortable strength. Let's see what that did. There we go. <clears throat> Do not play around with this stuff. Um, okay, let that settle down for a minute. Let's move on to the, uh, the New Yorker. All right, so this is... Uh, what was this? 59% alcohol. So a little a hair bit weaker, but you know, I'm not going to notice. Totally different nose. Um, complete. Okay. This is okay. We, we've got an anise bomb on our hand. This smells like salted black licorice. Um, 
maybe throw some fennel in there absinthe there's also some like a this has a little tiny min minerality kind of a note in there a couple you know a couple of little pebbles this is very mineral this is cold smoke this is um but then there's some like vanilla bean behind that a little bit of a Yeah, so it's so it's like a absinthe and minerals punching me in the face, but behind that, you know, like there's like this very lovely bowl of vanilla ice cream or something. Some seawater, little green banana, some some used motor oil. Not really cherry cola. There's more of a Kirsch note, um, so like cherry eau de vie. Um, little pineapple. This is a really austere nose. This is like, you know, I, uh, the, the Germans running the Greek economy kind of got a nose. Um, on the palate. Oh. It's actually surprisingly, like, fruity and even a little sweet. Um... It kind of arrives again in that salted black licorice thing and the absinthe thing. But then it's got this whole, you know, like sort of, you know, you've got like a dessert cart in, in Georgia thing going on here. It's got like um, some banana pie, some pineapple cake, a um, little little like, like pecan pie maybe, um, coconut pie, all the pies. Um, vanilla everything, like just lots of vanilla. You can you can you can tell the cast is playing here. It's not you know, it's not too much, but uh, I'm actually enjoying this a lot. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. A little espresso too. So you're you're all you're eating all of the desserts and you're having some espresso with it. But then also there's there's the olives mixed in, um, some more underripe bananas, coal smoke. A little lapsang souchong and, and that black licorice note just dominates on top of it um this is fun this is this is actually really good um it is it is austere though well no it, i mean it arrives austere and then on on the finish it gets sort of beautifully desserty um it's hard it's hard to describe i don't know if any if any of that makes sense i'm gonna give this one more squirt this one's a little bit more than the other one That's about the right, right strength. Give that a second. Um, okay, back to the uh, LFCH, the Velier. By the way, thank you to um, Jose in New York for sending me this little sample. He sends me a lot of good goodies. Um, with water. Yeah, okay, the vanilla comes out to play. And it's nice. So you're sort of getting, you know... Um, Mint tea, and you threw like some vanilla beans in there. Um, or maybe it's more like, like a vanilla latte, really. Um, throw in some white pepper, a little more kind of a minerality note. Um, even a kind of malted milk ball note in there, which I'm enjoying a lot. Um, and that floral note actually comes out a little bit more as well. It's it's almost like, um, but it's not it's not quite Flower, actual flowers. It's more like almost a, if you could make a, fl a flower liqueur or something. I'm not sure that's possible, but, but I'm sure someone has done it. Um, but And that's what I'm getting on the nose. Very aromatic, just very nice. Um, I will say the, the oak, the vanilla, is kind of fudging the, um, uh, the Hamden notes a little bit. But, uh, I mean, this is, this, this, this is very nice. On the palate. Oh. More rocks, more minerality coming out. Not quite not quite as much as, as this guy. Um we're getting minerality, um, kind of treacle toffee note, you know, like that very uh kind of minerally uh, kind of, of 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 toffee candy. You get, you get that from England. Um, 
and 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 a little bit of fennel, a little bit of fennel from this kind of transferred it into this. Um, that's kind of what I'm getting. Still very dominant on milk on mint tea. Yeah, mint tea, honey, cola cubes, sort of distinctive Hamden cherry cola kind of fruity note um, with the banana thing in there. Uh, and the floral element. Um, it's lovely. It's, 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 it reminds me a little bit of the, the stole. Oh, I didn't even show this. The, uh, this guy, the stolen overproof, which I reviewed previously. It reminds me a lot of that. It's sort of, it's, it's good Hamden. This is, I think, a, a lighter mark of Hamden than the stolen was. Um, but it's, it's, it's definitely Hamden. The oak is maybe fudging the signature a little bit more than I would like. Um, This is good. This is the this is the high end of good. Put it that way. I would give this an eighty-eight plus um, on my score, which is, you know, on the Dave Tate scale, we're 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 pushing the high end of good. So, moving on to uh, the the New Yorker again. Now I just had a little bit of water and a little bit of time to settle down. Okay. Um, Still very anise, very fennel driven, but um, some more traditional Hamden notes are starting to come out uh, uh, ahead now, like the, the cherry cola notes, some olives, brine, kind of overripe uh, tropical fruit, banana, um, a little kiwi maybe. Um, but the wood is also there. The, the wood, it's more like wood smoke than sort of um, overt sweet oakiness. Um, wood smoke and, and the coal smoke sort of tied into each other like your um, some juniper a little bit of um, MGP rye actually you know the, the um, Indiana rye everyone sources from there's a little bit of that in here along with the juniper note uh, tobacco smoke like, a, like an oriental tobacco like a slightly uh, floral citric tobacco note but it's really more herbaceous than than it is uh floral um if um in some ways it reminds me of like a young calvados like a young um pied d'age um and that's that's I, I mean that well i mean i had some difficulties with those but you know i i respect that 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 flavor profile that's kind of what i'm getting here okay on the palette That's lovely. Um, with a little bit of water, uh, the, the sort of monolithic nature of the black licorice kind of breaks up a little bit. And the dessert nature of this kind of just floods right in. Oh, that's really nice. Um, very seductive, very dessert-like. Um, so it's like you, you, sh you shove some black licorice in your mouth, but then like you're yeah, it's, it's like that, those, all the southern pies and cakes and fruits and, um, and so, like, it, this is just, um, in some ways it reminds me of the, the like, the, the, the four square vintages, except, you know, this is, except with the licorice and a much more hardcore, you know, pot still natured. I mean, this is like, you know, four square, eat your heart out. Um, What, it, what Foursquare doesn't have that this has is like a beautiful, like a drying herb thing on the back end. Um, it's the anise, but it's also some wood tannins, coal smoke, some, some mint tea, actually mint tea showing up here as well as here. The olives, it's a class act. I mean, it's just, it's really well done. I'm not gonna go too crazy on this little uh, New Yorker. I will give it an, uh, a 90 plus. The only um, problem that it has, I mean, this is terrific rum. The only problem that it has is uh, the standard, you know, Hamden overproof uh, in my book. Um, this is, you know, I, I love this stuff. I, I, I think it's, you know, the best thing you can buy for 70 bucks, um, frankly. But this is pretty close. I have no idea what the price point is on, on, on this. This is like 
think 80, something like that. Um, for ha Hamden Completus, we'll still want both of these. Um, <laughs> are there Hamden Completus out there? There have to be. Um, anyhow, that's all I got. High end of good, low end of great. Uh, does that make sense? Um, yeah, that's all, kind of all I got. Um, these are both well worth drinking, and I enjoy both of them very much. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been informative and interesting for you. And uh, cheers. <laughs>